To get started, let's take a look at iMovie's interface and basic workflow. Here, I've opened a project so we can see all the parts of the interface populated with content. The iMovie interface consists of a single window. Let's have the window fill the screen by clicking this green button at the top left corner. To exit full screen mode, press Escape. You can also enter full screen mode by choosing Window, Enter Full Screen. In full screen mode, the menu bar appears only when you move the pointer to the top of the screen. The iMovie interface contains five work areas, the toolbar at the top, the libraries list on the left, the browser, the viewer, and the timeline. You use the toolbar to open projects, hide and reveal the browser, import media, and share your projects. The sidebar contains the project media and libraries. Project media includes just those clips you've added to your project. Libraries are like suitcases of media that contain both the project media and additional media you import. Because libraries can often go large with potentially hundreds of clips, events can be created within the library to help you organize your media. Here, I have two events to separate clips from two different scuba diving locations. While events can be useful for large libraries of media, you don't actually need to use them to get started with iMovie. We'll talk more about events at the end of this tutorial. You can close the sidebar to make more room by clicking this button here. The browser is where you view your clips, rate them, make selections, and add them to your timeline. The Kate's First Dive project is currently selected in the libraries list, so all the media related to the project appears in the browser. When working on your movie, you'll often want to hide the browser so only the viewer and timeline are visible. This button instantly simplifies the interface, making it appear like the iOS version of iMovie. Along the top of the browser are buttons for selecting media you've imported, audio from your sound effects and iTunes libraries, and buttons for selecting built-in titles, backgrounds, and transitions. If we click the Projects button, we're taken to the Projects view, which displays thumbnails of all the projects that were previously created. You start a new project by clicking this button. We'll get to that in the next lesson. This button up top lets us easily filter which projects appear below by selecting a time range, a specific library, or all projects. You can even search for a specific project using the search field. From this window, you can select the media view. By selecting a library or event in the libraries list, all your media is viewable in a large browser pane. By selecting the theater button, you can view completed projects you've shared to iCloud for viewing on all your devices. Let's return to the projects view by double-clicking a project to open it. When you open a project, the clips that make up the project appear in the timeline. The timeline is where you build your movie by adding clips from the browser. You can change how much of the project is visible by dragging the zoom slider at the top right of the timeline. The viewer lets you see the contents of either clips in the browser or the contents of your project in the timeline. If you move the pointer over a clip in the browser, you see a thin vertical line called the skimmer. Moving the skimmer over a clip displays the clip's contents in the viewer to the right. You can move your skimmer over any clip in the browser and skim in any direction. Skimming is a fast way to get familiar with your media before adding it to your project. You can also skim your project by moving the pointer into the timeline. As you skim right or left, the content appears in the viewer. This vertical white line with a triangle on top is called the playhead. You can move the playhead anywhere in the movie by clicking in the gray area above any clip. You can also click and drag on the top of the playhead to move it. Let's move the playhead to the start of the project, then press the space bar to play the project. It was beautiful down there. It was really peaceful. Just to sit down there and not have to worry about anything, really, just breathing. All of these fish are surrounding me and I got to like touch a bunch of them, just really quick, like reach out and just touch them. And it was really cool. Okay, of course I saw the, the bright orange Garibaldi and um, some bass and these tiny little fish. I mean, they're really little. And there was a bunch of those, there's hundreds of those. I like having the gear, but I would just rather be a mermaid. You can adjust the relative size of the browser, 
viewer, and timeline depending on where you want to focus your attention. To do so, drag on the top of the timeline like this. The workflow for creating a movie is very straightforward in iMovie. The first step is to create a new movie or trailer. We'll be creating both types of projects in the following lessons. The second step is to import your media either from a camera or a folder. The third step is to edit your movie by adding clip ranges to the timeline. And the final step is to share your movie. Click the Share button to see the different destination options for sharing your project. Now that we have a feel for the primary components of iMovie's interface and workflow, let's get started on our first project by importing some media. If you want to learn more about iMovie, check out our Lessons for iMovie app in the Mac App Store, or go to rippletraining.com to see our full library of iMovie and Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials.